Amen. Praise the Lord. Good morning, everybody. We are just coming out. We're getting set up this morning. We've got an awesome guest. We want you to come on in and share with us today. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm just tagging a few people to remind them that we are live and in color. We've got Pastor Chaplain Intercessor Diane Stevenson this morning. We want you to come on, be a part of disability in the church. I see already, Diane, we have one person who is viewing. Thank you so much. When you show up, we want to give you an official warm welcome. So go ahead and put your comments, put your suggestions, anything that's on your heart this morning, put it in the chat, put it in the chat. All right, good morning. This morning we have, so far we have the lovely, vivacious Nikki Tony. Nikki Tony is here with us. Yes, yeah, she is our cerebral palsy warrior, praise the Lord. She's branching out now. Pastor Diane, she's doing podcasts now, hallelujah. She's doing interviews on Facebook Live. She just had her anniversary, Nikki's Circle of Support. So good morning, Nikki. Nikki's tagging th people. Thank you, Nikki. Thank you for tagging people. I'm going to do the same thing. There is a right word this morning in the house for us. Whoa, good morning, Shannon Nelson. God bless you, my sister. I pray that all went well at Nationals for you. I pray that you'll be coming to the Miss Amazing in October. I don't know if you are, but Blake and I will see you there next week. I hope so. I hope so. Good morning. Good morning. So Lady Natasha will be out here in a minute. All right. Okay. So we'll go ahead and get started just to kind of let everybody know who we are. I'm Dr. Danita Edwards. Many of you are familiar with me because we're talking every Saturday now. And this is Disability in the Church. It is a vision within Birthright Kingdom Deliverance Ministries, of which I am the founder. We launched probably a year ago. We have been evolving each and every week. Every time I talk to the audience, every time I talk to interviews, every time we're reading the word of God, we are evolving. We are right now a social media uh, face out here, a love and support platform. We have godly principles. We use godly principles. We use biblical accounts and we use firsthand testimonies talking about faith and disability. So come on out here. We're going to invite you every Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern time. And if you don't see us out here, just know that we're, we're thinking about you. <laughs> but our plan is to come every Saturday at 10 a.m. All right. So we have a few more people who showed up. Put your love in that chat. We want to just love on you this morning for a few minutes. Good morning, Arthur Tay. Good morning. God bless you, my sister. Always a faithful supporter of Dr. Danita and Disability in Church. Thank you, thank you. Lady Natasha, thank you for coming. You know what? I could just do a commercial right here, uh, Diane, about the folks that I have out here. Lady Natasha, I don't know if you know her, uh, Pastor Diane, but she does, she creates these soy candles and they look just like edible food. They smell like, she does the, 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 the uh, Snickers bar. It looks just like a Snickers bar. She does the sweet potato pies, look just like a sweet potato pie. And all of these are candles. They're candles. So Natasha, if you can, if you're able to, just put it in the comments, you know, your web so she can find you out there. Yes. Okay. Who else? All right. Praise the Lord. Who else is out here this morning? Yep. Shannon says she had fun. And yes, ma'am, we'll see you next Saturday. Praise <laughs> the Lord. Okay. All right. My Aunt Regina, good morning. Good morning, Aunt Regina. You are going to enjoy this word today. I want you to get your typing fingers together because you're going to have some responses for Pastor Diane. And then Salathio. Good morning, Salathio, our drummer in the Lord. He's out here this morning. Oh, wow. Look, let me go ahead and get started because we'll be spending all of our time on the hospitality part. But we are just so appreciative of you guys coming out because you know, it's no fun coming out here by myself. <laughs> <laughs> so let's pray real quickly. Welcome again for those who are joining. This is Disability in the Church. I'm Dr. Danita Edwards, and our guest for today is the lovely, admirable, integrous Pastor Diane Stevenson. Okay, one last one. Vernell is out here. 
Minister Vanell, she is ready for some word. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And Blake is out here. Okay, let me pray. Blake, good morning, Blake. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that we can come into your presence. And Lord, even in the comfort of our own home, we thank you, Lord Jesus, that this technology this morning is a gift from you, God, that we can speak through the airways. We can be seen and heard simultaneously. So we thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, God, that you make this platform affordable. Keep it affordable, Lord Jesus, so that your gospel can go forth. And Lord, we invite your presence. We say, have your way. Speak through our uh, uh, participants today, God. Speak through our audience, God. And we just lift up your name that you would be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. All right, so Pastor Diane, we have our audience. And I'm not, sure, I'm not sure if you already found it, but um, those who are looking at us this morning, share this thing, share. Yeah. We want some like, we want some support. We're trying to get the word out that disability is not what it used to be. It is not a disabling. Come on, it's encouragement. It is strength. It is ability. We are getting the word out. Hallelujah. So Pastor Diane, we're going to talk to her a little bit today. And as I shared, she's a pastor. She's a chaplain. Uh, she's an intercessor. Uh, she is going through school right now. Right now, she's in school uh, to get that doctorate. She's just uh, taking what she's been given by God. She's going to another level. Uh, right now, she's active in her church ministry. Uh, she works or is employed, uh, is assigned at the Christian Broadcasting Network. And we are going to hear from her today. Our goal is that somebody out here would realize that we all have scars, but there is victory in scars. And so, Diane, can you just share a little bit about who you are, your ministry, whatever's on your heart for us this morning? Yes, absolutely. And first and foremost, thank God for you, uh, Dr. Donita. I am just excited that I'm even here. And it's such a blessing. I, I watch you on Saturdays and I do the replays and I'm just uh, just excited. I told you one time I sat in my car at a mall was supposed to be going out walking and I couldn't get out the car because <laughs> your speaker for that day, I can't remember her name, but that I was captivated by um, just her, her story. So thank you for inviting me. And um, yeah, I just I want to talk a little bit about who I am. And again, as you've already said, I'm Diane Stevenson and now they call me in according to what arena I'm in, I'm either Apostle Diane Stevenson, <laughs> okay. or I'm Chaplain Diane, or I'm Pastor Diane. But no matter what, to God, I'm just His daughter. I'm just Diane, and so I just I love love any title that the Lord would would lay on me that causes me to be able to serve in a certain capacity. Um, so that's first and foremost. I just give Him all the glory and all the honor. And hello, good morning, welcome to everyone, and especially for those like I know Vernell, those that are in Florida. We have been praying for you and believing God uh, for your safety. Um, I've been talking to some people and um, finding out that they didn't have electricity and things like that. But I just pray that God will be with you and all the help will come to anyone that needs um, that help um, as well. Um, I. A little bit about me, though. Um, I have been at CBN for 20 years in various uh, capacities, but the one that I do now, I'm just very pleased and happy about, and that is to serve people in the capacity of chaplain. So I am the chaplain of the prayer center there, and I and I enjoy, like I said, every every moment of it. I've pastored a church uh, in uh, here in Virginia Beach for 10 years. I'm not no longer pastoring that church right now. Um, but, you know, God is still using me as he opened up the door of chaplaincy. So then now I'm, I'm reaching people pretty much all over. Um, in Philippines, I minister there in the Manila. Um, so I minister to those Mexico in our Mexico office. So God has, you know, enlarged the territories. Um, and then, so I'm, I'm real thankful that, for that. And I just would be remiss if I didn't say that, you know, I am blessed to be a part of Hedges and Highways. Um, deliverance ministry where my pastor is Pastor Michael Anthony Bailey, who is a awesome, mighty, powerful man of God. And uh, one day I heard the Lord just tell me to get up. This was after I stopped ministering. He said, get up and go out. And he mm. wanted me to go. And I had to fight because I was getting into a bad place. And uh, um, but I got up and I started driving and the Lord led me to um, this, this church um, right after, it was during the pandemic. And, uh, and I've been there, been there ever since. And God has been 
using me there, growing me up there, healing me more. I tell you, we will talk a little bit more about that, but healing me uh, from so many different things. And so I just thank him while I'm right there in that church being used. Uh, and I want to give a shout out to my daughter, who I know is watching, or if she's not, she will be watching. And that's Shelly. I call her my shero. Uh, <laughs> she, she, she has been there through everything that I've been through to kind of hold up my arms so that I could continue to do the work of the Lord. So I, I thank God for her um, just being there to uh, support her mother in the ministry. You know, the, being a PK kid is not easy. <laughs> Anybody know out there, it is not easy. They don't get enough attention. And, and we don't mean to do it, but we get so caught up with the, the work of ministry that they get neglected. But she held on to me and held on to her mother and let me do what God called me to do. And at the same time, be able to, you know, give her what she needs as well. And, and I mean, like I said, that's my Shiva, my best buddy. Mm -hmm. So um, that's a little bit uh, about me. Oh, I am part of a chaplain's uh, organization. Uh, it's called United, I always mess the name of it, UIC, United International Chaplains of Virginia. And, and uh, so I chap, I am a chaplain outside of uh, my job uh, as well. I definitely, I have a podcast. I mean, I know I have a YouTube page that I need to continue to grow. And mm -hmm. it's called Victory in My Scars, which now Dr. Donita Nanatu said Victory in, I think he said victory in the scars. I was like, oh, I like that. So I might be changing it up a little bit, but I do oh. like that. So I'm <laughs> ministering uh, to women, mainly women, but anyone, because everyone has a scar, like you said earlier. And my goal is to reach out to people to help them find that victory. Uh, sometimes we have it and don't even know we have it because we've been walking in a different way, but um, you do have it. And that's my goal in life is to help people get from where they are to where they would love to be. Because, you know, someone did it for me. So I want to make sure I'm passing that on. Wow, that's good. That's good. So um, I have a few more people who have jumped on, Pastor Diane. Okay. Mm -hmm. Minister Valencia is out here. Praise the Lord. Praise she, the Lord. She's the coordinator. I don't know if that's the right title <laughs> of our uh, intercessors team at the Mount Chesapeake, doing an awesome work for the Lord. She's also right. a fellow CBN employee. So praise the Lord, Minister Valencia, for coming out here. Amen. And thank you for sharing so much about uh, your expertise, because a lot of times, you know, we do find ourselves maybe listening to people and we don't know their background. Yes. You know, we don't know that they've got credentials and not so much that the credentials are the main priority, right. but it's good to know that somebody you're listening to has not only been through some of the same situations, but yes. now they're also gifted in the area of being able to teach others, to yes. train others. You know, they sat under, like Paul sat under Gamaliel. Yes. And, you yeah. know, and, and so thank you for sharing your expertise. Also, thank you for sharing about your daughter. Because I, I want to say my daughter posted this morning that I didn't put out there uh, Happy Daughter's Day. So Blair, if you come out here and watch this podcast, Happy Daughter's Day That's three right. days ago. <laughs> Amen. Happy Amen. National Daughter Day. National Daughter Day. That's right. well. I just want to tell you real quick, um, Doctor Donita. My daughter called me and she said, "Mom, do you do know it's uh, uh, National Daughter's Day?" And I said, "I said, baby, I go up there on Facebook and look. I was up at midnight making okay. sure I got it because that that is important to them. They they remember those things. And um, so yeah, I was up there posting and putting her pictures up, and she was able to go up and see it and. Uh, you know, to see all the wonderful comments. And I thank God for everybody who, you know, said something about my daughter that was so encouraging, you know, when I put that up. So yeah, they they know, they be looking for that. <laughs> They're funny. Okay. All right. So we got a couple of people saying, you know, they love you, Diane. I'm oh, I love you too. Here. So praise the Lord. So we're going to kind of get into the meat of, um, you know, our moment today, because you yes. all know that we only spend about 40 minutes, sometimes 45, it get, if it gets good in the Holy Ghost, we might spend about 50 minutes, but we want Diane to be able to share with us yes. you know, about, uh, and, 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 and I'm, I do apologize. If, I think I said victory in the scars, but you, you said your title is actually victory in my scars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Okay. Well, I'm going to follow your direction. Victory. in okay. My scars. Okay. Cool. So can you share a little bit about, um, um, you know, maybe what, what season, or, or, or what inspired you yeah. to begin to, to just, you know, meditate on the victory mm -hmm. and the scars? What, what, what happened? What happened that changed your outlook on, you know, maybe what trauma or situation that occurred? 
Absolutely. Yes. Thank you so much for asking that too. And I tell you, I have gone through quite a bit in my life, like many people have um, in their lives, but I began to take uh, notice mm. that I wasn't there anymore. And part of my life, and maybe many of you can, can relate to this, a lot of my life, as a matter of fact, I spent my time living like I was still in the place of the open womb. Mm. You know, I, I was no longer in the place of the open womb, but it felt like I was. And so I allowed myself to be treated a certain way. Um, people treated me a certain way because I allowed that to happen because that's how I saw me. I mm. saw me still a, a victim mm. filled with, uh, and, and I'm not going to try to get graphic or anything, right. but, you know, but just filled with, with, with mess all over me with, with, with the blood of the mm. abuse and, and not just the abuse of a physical abuse, which that also happened, but also the, the abuse of the verbal abuse, you know, the, the social abuse. Um, you know, just, I could go on and on with that, but all of that, that happened as I was a young girl mm -hmm. growing up in a neighborhood where, um, it was very influential, like if everything that went on there, everybody knew everybody. And, and, uh, and, and yet, you know, bad things had happened, happened to me. Um, and some people didn't know about it, maybe even to this day. And I won't actually go into detail about them, but there were things that happened to me as a young girl, um, that, really did something to my life it, I mean it literally it put a uh, it, uh, it opened up a wound okay if I if I can just kind of backtrack a little bit I'm going to talk about my um my childhood I, and I'd love to start off with this story as I go into talking about victory in my scars and and, uh, and there's a reason why it's victory in my scars although I do like victory in the scars as well the victory in my scars is because I feel like when someone says it they're taking ownership that they had a scar and that's important. And we'll talk for the little time we have here why that's important. But going back when I was a little girl, I was I remember standing at the at the uh, sink. You know, at the time we we didn't have dishwashers there, and, and probably I don't see my mom even have one now. And I have one and don't use it. So, but I was at the sink and I'm washing up my dishes while my mom was at work, and I was one the, the older daughter, the older girl, and so I was helping to take care of my my siblings. And I'm washing up those dishes. And as I wash those dishes, I put my hand into a glass and I did like this, if y'all can see, I kind of stuck my hand in the glass and I was trying to get to the bottom, you know, where the stuff mm. settles in if you didn't rinse it out. Yes. And one, I went like this and realized, oh my goodness, the glass broke. Wow. And when the glass broke, of course, there was a, there was a wound there. This wound didn't, didn't bleed right away. Okay. It, it, it was almost like the, the shock. If we know anything about like this, this is a physical wound. Sometimes the, the, the impact of it or the shock of it doesn't allow the, the blood to, to flow, oh, yeah. rush in. And so it didn't bleed basically right away. Well, I'm in a panic, not because I was cut, but I was in a panic because I broke my mother's glass, you know? And I thought, oh my goodness, she's left me in charge here. So I made a decision at that moment out of fear and I fear that my mother's going to do anything bad to me, but I was trying to uh, have her depend on me and, and know that I was someone, you know, she could, she could leave. I would take good care of the home. So I didn't want her to know that that happened. So I decided I was going to treat it myself, you know, and here was this, this big gash in my, in my finger and, and I'm gone and uh, put something on it. And, you know, I was trying to stop it from bleeding. And I know I, like I said, I didn't tell anyone about it. And it healed. It definitely did heal, but it just didn't heal properly. Mm. And that's what happens to a lot of us. And I know what happened to me when I look at my the physical abuse and the verbal abuse uh, and the sexual abuse that I went through growing up was no one really knew. Mm -hmm. Wasn't enough people that, that are not the right people yes. that knew what I went through to be able to help me come out of that in a healthy way. Lord. So I ended up carrying the, the verbal abuse of what was said to me and about me mm -hmm. day in and day out, living my life. You know, I found the Lord Jesus Christ and, and he was helping and healing, but there was still something there. And so low self-esteem was there for me. You know, I felt like I didn't, nothing I said was good enough. I shouldn't be, gosh, why am I even talking? Because it wasn't, it wasn't worth hearing because I've heard that as growing up. And, and you know, we're talking about um, disability in the church, you know, and, and, and there's a disability 
that starts outside of the church. And then when you get into the church, mm -hmm. you, you brought their disability into the church mm -hmm. and the church doesn't even, you know, they're, they're imperfect people and Boy. they can literally start uh, accentuating and, 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 and building on your, your disability, your hurt, your scar, your wound, and Boy. they may not even know it. Mm -hmm. And and so I had those things happen uh, to me in my life. And so uh, getting back to that scar, me trying to take care of it. So it actually, you know, it was it was open. It started to bleed and it was, you know, it would be so I knew I had to take control of the bleeding and I did. And then next thing you know, with that that scar on my hand, that it started turning into a scab, mm -hmm. you know, and so that meant it was healing from the inside. Okay. And and the Lord started ministering to me from that little one. Right now, I, I, I can look at my finger. Y'all won't be able to see it, but there is still the scar. Mm. And that's where this, this whole idea of victory in my scars came from, is me thinking about this physical hurt, mm -hmm. this, this, this open wound mm -hmm. that I had and mm -hmm. how I treated it, how and how I, I mm -hmm. kept it a secret. Yeah. I didn't want to tell my mother. I didn't want to, uh, her to think negatively or badly of me that I wasn't uh, responsible enough to do. And we, I, I know there's probably one person besides myself who walked through life where something traumatic happened to you. Maybe you were uh, sexually abused and you just took on the, uh, the pain of it alone because yeah. you knew your parents wouldn't understand it or your your yeah. loved ones wouldn't understand. They wouldn't, they, you know, and, and I know that too because I've been there in that place where yeah. these things happened to me, but I didn't run and tell anybody because I didn't think they would understand it. They may just put it back on me. They say it was my fault. So oh. there was this open wound and this open wound had to heal in a way that wasn't healthy. Glory to God, I tell you. This, this wound on my hand, had mm. to heal in an unhealthy way because I was afraid to tell somebody about it. Mm. And, and, and so where we are in, in our life, many women, especially, and men as well, mm. we have, and, and, and matter of fact, I'm not going to, I'm going to, from now on, not going to separate the two because right. men right. go through the same kinds of yeah. situations as women. And, and they even have to try to be even tougher, you know, mm. about those situations and maybe even go longer without telling them, telling anyone about it. But here I was, knowing that I had been hurt and abused. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it's interesting how hurt, they, people who want to hurt you and abuse you more are attracted to you mm. because you're open, your wounds are so open. Wow. You're, you're just spreading, you're spreading your blood all over. And when you think mm -hmm. about this, you know, and, and, and it's just attracting the wrong things. Like if yeah. you ever get cut and you, uh, and you're bleeding and you don't take care of it, germs can get in glory to God. I just feel the Holy spirit right there. The God is saying right now that many of us mm -hmm. are not healed from mm -hmm. the scars or from the pain of our yesterdays, not the scar, but just the open wound mm -hmm. and all kinds of bacteria, all kinds of things mm -hmm. get inside of a, of an open wound and can cause havoc. Whoa. It make you even sicker than if you just had treated it at that time. And mm. maybe many of us didn't even know how to treat it. Yeah. But I hear the father saying that, that he wants to be the one that closes up the wound. And he is truly the only one that can really do what needs to be done in that wound of our, of our inner man, of our hurt and our pains of our yesterday. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and the Lord also was sharing with me that if when you take care of the wound, the, the open wound properly, that it'll, like I say, heal from the inside. Mm -hmm. It'll create that its own scab. And, and when you get down to the scab of a natural uh, natural wound, a hurt, a scar, um, well, a, a wound, you know, you get the scab on it. And, and the Lord took me to that, that uh, season or that place mm. of the scab. We had the place of the open wound and how we did or did not treat it the right way. But then we get to the scab. What does that have? That the season of the scab. <laughs> and that's in our lives where before we even get to the scar, the season of the scab is when you are trying your best to do mm. what's right for you, to get you in a right place, in a right mindset. You know you've been hurt. You yeah. know you've been violated. Yeah. You know all these things. And you're looking for your own kind of way of getting those things taken care of because you got to still live. Mm -hmm. You're still living life. Yeah. You know, for me, I was a little girl when the scab happened. I was a little girl. I mean, when the scar happened. Yeah. No, let me say it. I was a little girl when the wound happened, when it was open. Now I'm going to, and you all follow me because I'm going to go back and forth from the physical to the, 
to this uh, emotional and, and the other things that took place in my life. Mm -hmm. But even as a little girl, my open wound of sexual abuse, mm -hmm. my open wound of verbal abuse, mm -hmm. you know, my open wound of physical abuse mm -hmm. were there at a young age. Yes. And what I did is I said, I got to get some help. So I started trying to figure out how to get help for those areas and they weren't helped in the right places mm, okay. and it didn't make my my any of my open wounds heal properly mm. they still were healing in an improper way but they were healing they were healing wow yeah y'all wow. yeah, follow me I, I may have found a, a young man in my life mm -hmm. in the, in back in that day mm -hmm. that I thought you know what maybe he can help yeah. close up this open wound hello hello Maybe this man will, that 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 looks like he really does like me will help close up my yes. my sexual wound, my open wound of sexual abuse, my open wound of uh, verbal abuse, my open wound of physical abuse. Maybe he can protect me. And then I found out that he was just as uh, broken. Lord have mercy. And had just as many open wounds as I had. Mm. And I had put my trust in someone who was bleeding just like I was bleeding. Lord have mercy. So he couldn't help me. But he only could hurt me. But but there there were certain things that this one person or or these situations could could actually start putting somewhat of a scab on it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But then I'm thinking, okay, well well maybe I am healing. You know, maybe I am getting better. Maybe I can talk now. You know, I was told. You know, there were times when I didn't believe I had a voice, but now I can I can maybe talk. Maybe I am healing a little bit. Okay. But just as soon as someone was to come and do something that reminded mm -hmm. me of my open wound. Right. Even when I had the scab, it was like, if everybody, everybody anyone ever had an a, a, a open wound and then you get a scar and then you have a nerve to go hit it on something. Oh boy. <laughs> Talk about the pain. The pain seemed like it was, it was worse than it was when you first cut yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's how it is in our lives where we think we're healing and we are healing. Maybe we sought the Lord. Maybe we've started doing some things that are helping us, but it's still not enough yet, but we yes. got the scab. So we're not bleeding all over everyone. We're not bleeding all over ourselves anymore. We yes. got a scab that's trying to, to, to heal that wound that was on the inside, but mm -hmm. it's still tender in there. And so when someone knocks up against you, when someone says some negative word to you, how, let me say this from my God, when some, something I'm talking from a female perspective in my life, mm -hmm. some man looked at me and said, girl, you sure look good. Mm -hmm knocked off my scab and started mm -hmm. my pain all over again. Wow. Whether they meant anything by it or not, it reminded me of my, that sexual abuse wound yeah. that I had in my yesterday. Wow. Maybe someone uh, says to me, don't you even know how to do that? I mean, goodness gracious, everybody know how to do that. Oh, oh that now you just knocked off the scab of, and opened up my verbal abuse wound. Oh boy. You Whoa. see, y'all follow me here. And yeah. so, so as you go on in life, and I mean, I, I, and I'm in my, the prime of my life, I'm in a good place in my life right now, but I look back over all the times that my open wound tried to heal, a scab was trying to get on it so that I could get to the place of my scar. Mm -hmm. Whoa. 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 And yet every time something would happen, I was, I was married and, and, and with my first, my first husband and and uh, it wasn't the best marriage. I, I, I jumped into it for all the wrong reasons because I was trying to get a scab, thanks to God. I was trying to heal. And, and I'm in this place thinking that I'm going to get the perfect family because I got the perfect husband and everything's going to work out. And it didn't turn out that way. And so knocked off that scab again. And that open wound was there again. And it wasn't until I got to a good place in a good church that the Lord sent me to Mm -hmm. And this wasn't even that many years ago. I mean, it's been probably maybe 15 or so years or maybe 20 years ago, but I got to a place where I was able to no longer have scabs keep getting knocked off and wounds opening back up again. But I was at a place where the, the scab could come and I was protected. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. We need a protection. We need yes. people that will come around us and protect the wound and protect the scab so that it can heal and end up with the scar. 
Yeah. And then you can look back and say, you know what? It's just a scar. I can right now look at this and I remember what it felt like. I remember how I felt when it happened. I remember certain certain things I did for this physical scar, but I can also look at it and say, but I don't have it. I don't have an open wound no more. Yeah. I'm not bleeding anymore. Right. You know, I'm not in pain anymore. I can, I can rub this scar all day long and I don't feel no pain. Yeah. And that's my, my story in a nutshell. And I do have much more I can share too, but in a nutshell, victory in my scars yeah. is the fact that I have a scar. I can look at it and say, I came out of it. Mm-hmm. I didn't lose it for this physical. I didn't lose my finger. Mm-hmm. I didn't have any infection that, that set in, yeah. that I was brought out by the hand of God mm-hmm. in the midst of everything. And I still have the opportunities to, to do better and to help somebody else now. So I, I, I have victory in my scars and I want to help everyone that I can get to that place where no matter how much abuse you you went through, because remember in this world, we will have all kinds of tri- tribulation. We'll have all kinds of situations happen. We're living in a world where the Satan is running rampant, but it doesn't mean that he can keep us down and mm-hmm. cause us not to walk in our victory. Amen. So that's, that's what, one of the things that I want to help everyone with. Wow. Wow. And Pastor Diane, you've given us some good uh, insight. You've given us a real flesh and blood testimony. And uh, I'm just going to reach out a little bit. We got a couple of comments. Of course, people are saying, you know, glory to God and praise the Lord. And I'm I'm thinking that in the moments when they didn't make a comment, they were thinking about those um, wounds. They were thinking about those wounds. They were thinking about you know, the scab, they were thinking about, you know, Lord heal. And they were also thinking about their testimonies, their personal yes. testimonies yes. of yes. what God has done. So I'm going to just reach over a little bit and just glean okay. some of these comments out here uh, because let's see. So Lathiel, he picked right up on it. He said, abuse is terrible and physical hurt. He said, if you see something, say something. And um, that, that's so true, Salathiel. And uh, Salathiel is a little bit younger than us, Diane, mm-hmm. Pastor mm-hmm. Diane. So, uh, Salathia, we grew up in a time where when things happen, uh, people didn't talk about it. They didn't like to talk about it so much. But I thank God now, like Salathia said, if you see something, say something. Yes. They, they just didn't know how to deal with it. That's so they, right. They, they closed up that wound. And unfortunately, you know, some of it calls healing improperly. Okay. That's right. So, and then uh, Regina, Minister Regina. She says, he wants us to heal from the inside out. Mm -hmm. Minister Vanell said, wounds to scabs, to scars, to help and healing. Yes, yes. Yes, that's it. Yeah, because God God is our resource. Based on what Diane said, she tried to implement everything that she could think that she could do it herself. Mm -hmm. You know, she was wiping, she was putting the water on, everything she knew as a kid. (laughs) As a kid, Mm y'all, she was working, trying to work it out. But God says, I've got a better healing plan for you. Yes, so yes. let me see who else. So um, um, Lady Natasha added a website. We're gonna have to take a look at that. It's called uh, Point of Grace, Heal the Wound. It's a worship song. Oh, Grace. yes, I'm familiar. Yes, yes. Oh, good, you're familiar with that. Good, mm-hmm. so you're right in line. Okay, so I'm making sure I got everybody, but I got, I've got plenty of hearts. I believe I saw um, uh, Loretta, Minister Loretta out here. I think she put some hearts out here too. Uh, but I just, I just want to say, you know, all that you have gleaned from your experiences, you know, for a minute, just for a minute, not, not too deep, but uh, I'm, I'm thinking about my mind goes to um, children, you know, who, who are hurt and yes. don't have a way to, to come out and feel that they don't have a way to come out. Um, you know, not that we're children on here, but sometimes, you know, we still have that child like inside of us. Is there something you would say to a young person? Or is there something you would say to a, a, a middle-aged person, you know, somebody young or young yeah. in the Lord, even mm-hmm. something mm-hmm. you would say to them about healing, getting that healing? Absolutely. Yes. I, I feel like no matter what age you are, there is a, a desire there that God wants us to be healed. Mm-hmm. And so even as a, as a little kid or a child or, or a young adult, because, you know, trauma and these situations happen all throughout our lives and different stages of our life. And to know that you are loved by God and this was not his desire for you to be uh, hurt, to be traumatized, to have these bad things happen to you. That's not God's plan. So love on him and seek him because he loves you. 
and, and listen to what God, you know, pray to God, let God lead you into a place of healing. And as a matter of fact, I have in my uh, notes, but from my, when I'm doing my, my little broadcast or whatever, I talk about, you know, finding someone that you can trust. Yes. Finding that safe place and that safe person. And that's not always easy to do, but seeking the father will help you find that person that God will, God, you'll know it. You'll feel something in you that says, I can talk to this person about what I'm going through because we need someone to help hold our hands up, someone to lead us, someone to give us a safe place to talk about what it is we're going through. You know, I, my safe space came very late in life, but I was still, when you said something that's so, so profound and so true, I was still, the little girl in me was still hurt yeah. and still Open, still had some wounds that hadn't healed. Yeah. And when I went over to Newport News, as a matter of fact, and uh, with my my pastor that was uh, in Newport News, he's now gone home to be with the Lord. But he he did something so funny. I mean, really, uh, he he. I came into his office. Well, I came into the church, and when I w- went into the church, I had on. I only wear like eyeliner and and. I don't know much about mascara and, and makeup and everything, but I had a little makeup on. Basically, I looked just the way I looked today, little lipstick, little eyeliner and, and uh, something on my eyebrows. And uh, But when I walked into the church, some, someone had to drop me off at the church. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then they, they were going to come back. They were running to get something. They dropped me off. And when I realized, uh, Dr. Danita, that there was only one car in that parking lot and it was the my pastor's car. And, mm. he was a, and he's a male. Okay. That, the my past flooded me and I got so scared so nervous and he just happened to be looking out of the window and he opens the door and he says come on in and -hmm. you know panic set in I'm like I can't go in there because all of the the things of my past the traumas of my past come back because remember I hadn't totally healed properly I was treating it in the way I knew how so I was getting scabs but they were getting knocked back off and uh but I went in and I went directly to the bathroom. I think this is the story will help someone. I ran yeah. into the bathroom and I wiped off my eyeliner and I wiped off the lipstick as much as I could. And I looked at myself and I thought, okay, now you look pretty plain. Just because okay. I was under the impression that every that how I dressed, how I walked, my face, anything would cause I was the cause of someone wanting to 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 sexually abuse me or to hurt me or to whatever mm-hmm. I I was the reason for it so I cleaned myself up and walked out and I'm telling you this wasn't the best thing I, that he he said why did you do that mm-hmm. and, and now he's a he's a, he's a pretty hefty man and uh, mm-hmm. and then had a super soft loving heart you know uh-huh. and he said why did you do that he never said what I did and that and that was that's important to the story because. If he had said what I did, I would have decided, oh, well, he, I, my mom would have thought he was just looking and, you know, whatever, you know, yes. and I would have yes. thought negatively. He would say, why did you do that? And I said, do what? Now remember, y'all, I'm in a church, yeah. <laughs> but I am saved, though, but I'm in the church, but I didn't want to talk. And I said, do what? He said, why did you do that? He asked the question again. I said, oh, oh, you mean the lipstick? I said, oh, yeah, I just took it off. I said, I didn't really think I needed it on anyway. Okay. He says, okay. he takes this chair and he sits this chair so close to him that I was thinking, and there's no way I'm gonna be able to sit there. And he, he says, come sit down. He said, we need to talk about this. Okay. And from first I sat down and I think I might've been just sweating. I was so nervous, but I did sit down because I had a, there was a, there was such a respect for this man. And I could feel Father God saying this was a safe place. So we have to know yes. that it's safe. And I felt everything in me, him saying that this was safe. And I sat down and I began to talk to him. And I said, I said things to him that I've never said to anyone else. I opened up and told him even what happened to me within the church, mm-hmm. not his church, but prior to another church. And mm-hmm. I talked to him about these things that I was that, that had kept inside, believing that, first of all, I was the reason for it. I caused it. Um, I didn't want anyone to look bad. I, I, wanted, I didn't want to make you know anybody else. And what really came out of that is a healing. Like I've never... Mm-hmm experience and I believe that's where my victory and my scars also kind of grew because I left out of there knowing that who I was in Christ Jesus and that I wasn't the cause of any of the things that happened to me yeah the enemy more than anything Satan himself you know he come to kill steal and destroy us he was the reason for my Mm -hmm. pain he was Satan got into the the hearts and and minds of others and Mm -hmm. used them to destroy try to destroy the gift of God 
me. I am a gift of God. We, you are a gift from God. And the enemy is trying to destroy every gift that he can get his hands on. He, and if he can't destroy to the point where you're no longer here, he wants to bash it and ruin it and make it. Nobody wants to get a gift that, you know, somebody come to your house and say, I brought you a gift and it's all wet and soggy and beat up. And you ever had an Amazon gift come to you? I mean, an Amazon package come and sometimes it's all messed up. And you're yeah. thinking, oh, goodness, the stuff in the inside got to be messed up because the whole outside is messed up. Well, that's what the enemy tries to do to us as gifts, wow. to make us look so messed up, wow. make us look like we're worth nothing, mm -hmm. that everyone else will treat us like we're nothing. And I left out of that, that uh, church that day. In matter of fact, we went on to have choir rehearsals and everything else. And I had a little bit of a nervousness that he's going to, over the pulpit, anybody ever get word that the pastor going to talk mm -hmm. about you over the pulpit? Wow. <laughs> uh, but or at the pulpit or over the podium and mm -hmm. I was nervous that that he's going to bring a story up and he may not call my name but I'm going to know he's talking about me mm -hmm. well I can tell you to this day and as I said he's in heaven with the Lord now he never said a word yeah. he never shared what I shared with him but he gave me the utmost respect and he never put down people that I thought you know like, I can't say that they did this to me because what if this, and I don't want to ruin their career or whatever. He never said anything negative about them. He only focused on who I am in Christ. And I want us to know that who we are in Christ Jesus is everything. Mm. And there is an enemy that's out to kill, still and destroy us. But we do have victory in our scars. Every time you look at your scar of verbal abuse, of physical abuse, and you've walked out of that thing, it's a scar now, saints. It is not an open wound. You're not yes. bleeding all, all over yourself and over everyone else. Yes. You are healed up. And now you can go and help somebody else. And you know what, Dr. Tanita, you can recognize someone now yes. who has open wounds that haven't healed. And now you know how to go to them. So that's what I found myself. I know how now to go to okay. people because okay. I can, I sense, I know who they are. They don't have to say a word. Mm -hmm. But I can see it in them and I can I can see open wounds. I mm -hmm. can see scabs that mm -hmm. have been knocked off and, and try to get back on. And I, I can go and I can give them that love and that help and these resources that'll help walk them through so that they can heal properly heal and properly. then be everything that God called them to be. Wow. Amen. Amen. This is so wonderful, um, uh, Pastor Diane. I'm thinking about my own situations right now. And, um, you know, to tell the truth, I don't, I don't want to stay here, but uh, just to kind of let somebody know that you need help getting through some of these situations, yeah. you know, and, um, you know, sometimes it takes, it doesn't take somebody with a college degree to get you through it, Amen. but it does take somebody who is anointed by God to speak to your very situation. Yes. You know? And yeah. I've, I've been through counseling a couple of times, Pastor mm -hmm. Diane, but yeah. I knew uh, pretty much after the first or second session with particular counselors that this is not the one for me. Right. You right. know, and, and I, I go and, you know, seek out somebody else and I, I feel the Holy Spirit saying, this is it. You can yes. share that moment because here's what the Lord shared with me a few weeks ago, a, a few months ago, maybe that the enemy, he's trying to steal your identity. Mm -hmm. In those moments, and you kind of say that we're we're a gift from God, and yes. the enemy comes to try to blemish you, yeah. you know, so that you don't feel respected, you don't feel honored, you know. And so I don't want to stay there, but I just want to share that a minute. That's but so what, good. What I want to do is because we've got a lot of people out here, and Lord knows, every time I'm talking to you, Pastor Diane, I want us to have like a show together where we talk for a long time. Amen. <laughs> yes, we can do that for yeah. sure. Definitely. So I got some folks out here who have made some comments. And so I want to uh, kind of go past them, but I'm getting some hearts out here. Author Tay, thank you. Uh, Minister Vernell said, healing is so crucial yes. for true freedom. True freedom, true freedom. Yes. The way that uh, Minister Diane has said that she came through that process mm -hmm. and she's clean so much. And now she sees the victory. She sees that she's healed. She sees that she has purpose. She yes. acknowledges that it wasn't right. She acknowledges that it wasn't her fault. And she also acknowledges that she found out who she is, that she is a child of God, that she's confident now in who she is, you know, that she can speak to other people's lives because God has given her that insight. So that's the point we want to get to, that we know 
that that, you know, that wasn't our fault. It wasn't, you know, something that we were in, you know, we happened to do something wrong. No, it was straight from the enemy. Come on. Yes. Diane exercises faith to believe that God used her now to speak to people in that same situation. Amen. So yes. I have a couple other comments out here. Um, so Lathiel, he's agreeing. So Lathiel says sometimes, uh, what you say, Salatia? Okay. In every life as Christian believers, you have to know who you are in him through Christ. And you have to keep reminding yourself, Salatio. That's right. Yes. <laughs> yes. Reminding. So who else has something that we got a lot of uh, apostle? I think it's apostle Donna Payton. I know she is the anointed prophetess. Uh, she's Salatio's mom. Hallelujah. Okay. Thank you for joining us today. And she's just agreeing with you. And I know she has a powerful testimony. I, I don't know her testimony, but the way that she speaks into the lives of people, that's how you can tell that somebody has a testimony. If that's they're right. able to come in like a, a lion and they're just, whoo, whoo, she uses that sword. Okay. So coach Latria, she's out here. Uh, she says, we must recognize the difference between a wound and a scar. Lord have mercy. Coach Latria, you are so right. She Coach, said it all. <laughs> she said, Coach Latria, um, she's a, a coach, a disability coach. She goes all across the nation now. Um, oh, right. I forgot where she's headed. Is she headed to Ohio in a, in a couple of weeks? Uh, but okay. anyway, she's all across the nation talking about, you know, having that identity. Mm -hmm. really talking about that. Vernell said counseling is important. Pastor Paula Jennings is out here. Oh, she says she wants to sow a seed. Praise the Lord. Amen. I put my cash app out there. We will we'll make sure Pastor Diane gets that. Praise the Lord. Oh, uh, praise the Lord. Said, no shame. We're getting some good comments out here because it's, it's true. We have lived this thing called life. But yes. Coach Latria says she's headed to Detroit. Detroit. So, okay. Yeah. So Arthur Tay said, um, sometimes our circumstances seemingly speak louder than God's word. Lord have mercy. Mm. Let me wow. tell you, let me tell you what I learned recently. Let go and let God. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> don't, yeah. don't dwell in that place. Don't keep reminding yourself, yes. you, know, you know, delete those old notes. <laughs> about delete them. Delete them. Delete it. Hit delete. Yes. So what I want to do, I hope um, we, we're, we're kind of coming on to our time now. Yeah. Uh, but I would love for Pastor Diane to, to edify us uh, with some words. Because what I have found, y'all, is when I went through counseling and I had to share uh, some of the, the wounds from my childhood. Yes. The first counselor that I went to, a Christian counselor, I would leave that counseling session after I had felt like I poured out my, my all in all. Mm -hmm. That's, and I would get in the car and I felt like I was sick to my stomach. So mm -hmm. I went back to my counselor and I told her, because I didn't know the process. Right. I said, is this how I'm supposed to feel when I leave here? Right, right. But what she realized, Pastor Diane, was after I opened up that wound, because the wound was still open. It Come never on. After it was open like that, I would go out in the public and felt like everybody could see it. That's right. That's right. So yeah. what she started giving me was a plan for me. She said, all right, you're going to read uh, Psalm 51 yeah. every time when you leave. Because it was like, I got I got this open wound, y'all. Yeah. And I got to put the word on it to mm -hmm. heal it. So I started getting my identity back. You know, wow. and I say he's created in me a clean heart and he renewed the right spirit. Yeah. And it helped to close up that wound. Yeah. Help to close up that wound. Yeah. So, and I know we really didn't get like into the physical, you know, disabilities, you know, on today. Sometimes we like to, to you know, get into physical. Right. We, we can't separate a physical and a spiritual mm. because sometimes you have both. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, you have that physical and you have that spiritual, but it's really about the outlook of what that wound or that situation or that circumstance did that you felt like it did to you. So yes. you're really dealing with some type of, you know, disability. It really so I hope, is. I yeah. hope everybody can agree, you know, that, um, that Pastor Diane has just been such a resource for us today to let God heal it properly. He wants mm -hmm. to heal it properly. So um, I want, Diane, if you can, yes. edify us. Absolutely. For us 
to speak over us. Amen. You have such a gentle spirit and we know that it's coming Amen. from the Holy Ghost. So Amen. we're going to do that. And before we do that, let me ask, are there any quick questions that you might have anybody out here? Because we don't want to, you know, our time together is so important. Yes. And if you have something privately you like to share, you know, just reach out to me. Don't put the private, you know, in the, in the chat. Right. Uh, you can, I'm sure, reach out to Pastor Diane, maybe get to know her a little bit. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, if you just want to share something, because what I believe from Pastor Diane is the Lord has given her a heart for people. He's given her a listening ear and she knows how to channel whatever you've given her. She's going to give it just straight back to the Holy Ghost. Yes. She's she not going to carry that. She's going to you're going to give it to her and she's going to give it right to the Holy Ghost because he wants it anyway. That's so true. So true. Let me see if there are any comments out here. Let's okay. see. Oh, Natasha, Lady Natasha says, uh, what is your website? Maybe you can share that with us. Okay. Um, and, and if you don't share it now, you can always come back on the repost and add it to the comments. I will but do that. I'll, I'll come back on the repost. Okay. Yes. Oh, Lord. Uh, Arthur Tate said, thank you for the spiritual antibiotic. I saw that. Praise God. Oh, that's good. That was real good. I love that. Arthur Tate, you're teaching right there. Yes. Oh. Okay, let me see. Somebody said, did you see my comments? Oh, Nikki, Nikki, Tony said she had a comment. I must have missed it. Let me look back. I know she put out here about Blake's podcast. Uh, Nikki, Tony, let me see. Let me go back and I must have missed it. I apologize, Nikki. Okay, let me see. I'm going back. I'm looking, Nikki. Oh, she said, thank you for bringing awareness. October 6th is National World Sarah Palsy Awareness Day. Okay. Right. Cerebral Palsy. I said cerebral palsy. Sometimes pronounced. Yeah. So yeah. praise the Lord for that. Okay. Amen. We're going to bring more awareness to that. Nikki, if I've missed it, please put it back out here in the chat. I'm scrolling down, but I don't see a, a question. Forgive me. Sometimes the comments come in quick and I miss them. But please, if you had a comment or a question, Nikki Tony, please put it back out here. I stopped saying charge it to my uh, head and not my heart. <laughs> I don't need any charges. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I, don't, I don't charge it to my head. Uh -uh. Okay, I'm just making sure I got everybody. Okay, Vernell said counseling is important. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right, I'm just making sure we got. Yeah. Okay, I'm making sure. Okay, somebody said they want Pastor Diane to come to one of our intercessors meetings. Yes, Amen. yes. We hold a monthly meeting. I'm going to let uh, Minister Valencia reach out to you, but we hold a monthly meeting okay. where it's not a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Holy Ghost. Yes, yes. Healing the intercessors from the inside, like you oh. said. Yes. Oh, God. God. Yeah. That's a whole nother message right there. An intercessor, woo. Ooh, yeah, yes. Jesus. Yeah, so praise the Lord for that. Okay, and Salathiel, we'll reach out to you, Salathiel. He said Blake had a podcast. He didn't. He didn't know she had one. That's yeah. that's that's God, Salathiel. <laughs> yeah, y'all know about Blake. Blake had speech therapy all through uh, high school mm -hmm. because you know they said she wasn't forming her words right. Mm -hmm. They even tried to talk me into uh, having a surgery on her tongue. Mm. And it hurt me. So I said, I can't do that. Right, right. I can't, I can't put her through that hurt. Yes. Yeah. But look at God. Now she's being used by look at God. God. Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. Wow. Thank so, you, Jesus. Yeah. Now she's speaking. She's in, you know, different places and, and going to do more. Going to do yeah. more for the kingdom of God. Because that wound was just yeah. temporary. Yes. It healed from the inside. Come on. God gave her the victory. God gave her the victory. Yes, yes Lord. Yes. All right. So we're going to let Diane just speak into us, you know, for the yes. next few minutes. And, and um, you know, thank y'all for the extra time today. We'll be finished, I'm sure, by 11 o'clock. Oh, but yes. Diane, go ahead. However you want to let the All Lord right. just flow in the Holy Ghost and speak Amen. to us about the victory. Yes, God. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. You know, I really just thank God for this time. And I pray that something I said has really just touched your heart and helped you to begin to heal. And like you said, we don't want to leave someone back in that place with, you know, thinking about those open wounds or what do I do now? Yeah. The one thing I can encourage everyone is go to the Father even now. And and because first of all, I have this saying, it's called ask, A-S-K-K, -K, ask. And it stands for first acknowledge, 
that you have an open wound because that's how healing starts is we have to realize that we have a wound we we haven't healed properly and then the, number two is to begin to seek you're going to seek out your help however that help comes and, and, and s is also for finding that safe place for the help to come to you and then we have let me see if i have my thing i don't know if i have it pulled up here oh i think i did okay let's see here give me a minute i'm gonna give you all, all yeah mm -hmm. So seek God for understanding, for guidance, and for healing. The K is to know every day that you are victorious. It's a process. Mm -hmm. Today you might feel, you might not wake up feeling victorious, but you got to know that you know that you know that you are, you are victorious because of Christ that's in you. That's your victory right there, that you are not back in the place. For me, I'm not in that, that room where someone was abusing me, uh, whether verbal or whatever, but I'm not there anymore. So I have to know every day that I have victory. And the other K is to know what victory looks like. Wow. Sometimes we don't even know that we, you know, you ever look at your scar or you look at the scar in your life and you and you realize it's really a scar, but you've been walking around like it's an open wound. And yet, mm. so, wait a minute, I've accomplished this. And God has used me for this. And I could, so now you, you have to begin to recognize, you have to know what victory looks like. Victory looks like you coming out of where you were and now in a new place doing something new and something different. And you're no longer letting that one who hurt you hurt you anymore. You have to know what victory looks like. And, and I want to give you some scriptures here as well, because I had a couple of them that it just blessed my heart. And I know to be a blessing for you. Let me see if I can find it really quickly. I hope it won't take too long. If not, I'll just. All right. Well, here's one of them that I'll give. And it says that I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And that's in Philippians. You have to keep pressing. Mm. A press. You keep pushing through the pain, push through the, the, the uh, inadequacy that you feel. Uh, saints, but those that work with me, you might have seen it or know a little bit that I push through some things that happen that are said because I know that I am victorious in Christ Jesus. So I'm encouraging you on the day to press, glory yes. to God, press toward the mark, press toward where you want to be, press towards your victory. It says mm -hmm. for the prize of the high calling of yes. God in Christ Jesus. Christ has something good for you. The Lord God has already have a purpose and a plan for your life. Yes, you went through some things, but you've already come out of it. Some of you might still be in some situations, but press. Mm. Don't stop pressing. Don't yeah. stop pushing to get out of where you are. And then the, uh, the another scripture and I want to share is Isaiah 54, 17. And you all know it. I live by this. No weapon formed against me shall prosper mm. or against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, glory yeah. to God, you yeah. shall condemn. So you, God has given you the authority to take authority, condemn those things that happen, say those yeah. happen and they should not yeah. have happened to me. And I will not let it happen again because Christ in me is going to make, uh, uh, it's a hope of glory. It's going to help me go through it. So stand on the word that no weapon formed against you. Yes, there was a weapon that was mm -hmm. formed against you. The enemy was trying to destroy your package. The enemy was trying to, to tear you up and make you look like you were nothing, that you had no voice and you're not important and it, whatever. But no weapon formed against you yes. is going to prosper. It will not prosper. Amen. In every tongue, now yes. we're talking about verbal abuse, every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, take authority. You can condemn it. You can say, that is not who I am. Yeah. I am a head and not a tail. I am above and not beneath. I am the apple of God's eye. I know who I am in Christ Jesus. And you, know, and you begin to speak those words of affirmation over your life. Why? Because you can come against every tongue that rises up against you in judgment and you can condemn it. Amen. And, I just, and I'm going to stop right there because the time is up, but hopefully that just encourages your heart to grab a hold to the word of God. There's some truth. There's nothing but truth in it. And it's the truth that will help set us free from our, vic uh, from our wounds and help us walk in victory. Amen. I'm going to turn it back over to you. Wow. Wow. This has been so good. I know if, if we were in person, we'd be clapping our hands, we'd be standing <laughs> our feet and raising our hands. Thank you, God. Amen. Thank you, God. Yeah. And um, this story, uh, you know, your testimony is just so familiar to many of us in the body of Christ. And we are believing that you are our gift today. Amen. Pastor Diane, and Amen. you have inspired us. You have encouraged us. You've given us food for thought but don't stay in that place. I like what you said. I put it out here about your A, the, uh, ask. I put it out there, but if you yes. want to repost it, 
Okay. Please feel free. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, you know, we have to know what victory looks like. And well, here's what Pastor Diane said. Pastor Diane said, <laughs> victory looks like you. Yes. Victory looks like you. That's right. You. It looks like you. And you guys got, as she said, pressing, you got to keep saying it. What does victory look like through the tears? Come on. Look in that mirror and say, victory looks like me. Yes. And the God that did it for Pastor Diane wants to, needs to, has to, declares that he will do it for us. And so the Holy Spirit says, stop thinking less of yourself. No. That's, that's the word today. Stop speaking less of yourself. Amen. All right. So we've Amen. got some people that are enjoying this. Um, let's see. Somebody said, uh, thank you for such a rich dialogue. This has been good. I pray that we can um, come back together again and have Pastor Diane to come and just share her heart more with us and um, just dialogue more. I'm ready to get back in person. I'm yes. Ready to get some hands on. Yes. <laughs> hallelujah. Sabrina Parker is out here. Thank you, Lady Sabrina, for dropping by. She says, Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I am a witness. It looks like me. So, Lord, we All thank right. you for this day. Yes. Oh, oh, anybody who wants to sew, I did uh, share that Cash App out there. If you don't have Cash App, just contact me. We'll make sure we get the offering. Uh, to Pastor Diane or, or contact her personally. But let's go ahead and pray. We're at the 11 o'clock hour. Amen. God, we just thank you, Lord, for your word. God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, that the, the mere mention of the name of Jesus, oh God, the mere mention of the yes. name of Jesus, God, is our solution. God, is our help, is our hope. God, is our spiritual antibiotic, Lord. Thank you for thinking about us today, God. Thank you, Lord, that Pastor Diane said, no weapon formed against us shall prosper, Lord God. You said that we can condemn those tongues that speak. So Lord, we rise up in victory today, God. We scream and holler, hallelujah. hallelujah. Name, God. We pray for Pastor Diane. Lord, we thank you, God, that, oh Lord, I hear it, that one can chase a thousand and two can put 10,000 to flight. We have put 10,000 at least yes. to fight today, God. And Lord, we stand our ground that the burglar, you said when he's caught, he has to pay, I think it's a sevenfold. He has mm. to repay. We've caught him today, Lord. And yes, we thank you, oh God, that that issue is resolved, Lord. We thank you, God, that Diane was used today, God, thank to you, be Lord. the chain breaker for yes. us today. We are lighter on our feet because of what she has spoken. So Lord God, we thank you. We bless you, God. We pray blessings over everyone who had an thank ear you, to Lord. hear. We ask you to visit them on today, God. We bless your name for what you're doing. We thank you for disability in the church. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless wow. everyone. Wow. All right, y'all. We have had a great time going out there. Like, and share this post. Reach out to Pastor Diane if you want to talk yes. to her. Let's say thank you for just an awesome time. So Lord willing, we won't see you on next Saturday because Blake is in a pageant. Okay. Shannon Nelson is in a pageant. Miss Amazing pageant next Saturday. But we will see you for the week after that with <laughs> Minister Ulysse Jelani going to come and inspire us from the Mount at Chesapeake. All right, y'all. All right. You are what victory looks like. So praise the Lord. God bless you, Pastor Diane. I will God bless. Be to you. You All have right. a good day. God Thank bless you. Everybody. God bless everyone. Bye-bye.